Now that we've seen how the individual blocks behave, it's time to take a look at how to actually move them around on the page. And the first method of doing that is with the position property. So let's open up our tryoutpositioning.html file here. That's in your chapter seven working files. I'll open it first in the browser. And you can see that we've just got a head and a couple of paragraphs with one of the paragraphs kind of pulled out. And of course, let's open that up inside of our text application too. With this document, what I'd like to do is start by manipulating this text box class that we have right here in the middle of the two paragraphs. Now we've already got a style rule started up here at the top. You can see our text box has a width, it has a little bit of padding, and of course it has the background color set up so that we can easily see it. Now if we want to control its position on the page, we'll simply add a position property. And the default position is static. And of course, if we set that and save our changes and go back and look at our document, we won't see any difference because it was already set at a static position. Now, what that means is we're talking about the way that the paragraphs are gonna fall as they stack going down the page. Obviously, this paragraph is gonna be sitting underneath that paragraph and it's setting the start position for the next paragraph after it. For the rest of the values of position, we're actually gonna move this one paragraph away from this static position of underneath the first and before the second one. Now let's go and try the first difference. Now one value we can try here instead of static is relative. A relative position allows us to start wherever the static position would normally be, and then simply move that object by displacing it from any one of the given sides, top, left, right, and bottom. Setting a position of relative by itself doesn't do a whole lot, but it sets us up to move this div around. So what we'll need to do is add a couple of properties after it to say which way we want the object to move. I'll start with a property of top, and I'll give it a measurement. Let's say 100 pixels. I'll save that change, and let's go see what that does to our div. When I refresh the page, you can see that this div is bumped down 100 pixels from its original location at the top here. It didn't move in any other direction, and you can see that it's even overlapping the paragraph below it. Now, in addition to top, we can use left, right, and bottom. So let me just add in a left measurement as well. I'll set it to 100 pixels, the same as the top one. We'll save our change, and when we refresh the page, we should see that the div is now moved over from the left side 100 pixels, and in addition, we still have the movement from the top down 100 pixels as well. Notice with this change that the original two paragraphs are still sitting exactly where they were before. In fact, they're acting as if this box is still in its original location. So the first thing that we can see about the position property is that it's only gonna modify the block you apply it to. Now, there are a couple of other settings we can use besides static and relative. The next one I want to try is absolute. With the absolute property, we're actually specifying a position within the document itself. So let's see how that's going to work. First, I'll change our position from relative to absolute. And I'll go ahead and leave the measurements that we had before. This time, though, the measurement's going to be different. First of all, absolute pulls that block out of the normal flow of the document. So we should see these two paragraphs close up and they'll basically be acting as if this box wasn't there at all. Then our top and left position will set the position inside the content itself. Now let's see this by saving our changes. We'll go back to our browser and refresh the page. And what we want to look at first is our two paragraphs now are close together. So we've closed up that space and we're acting as if this block has been pulled completely out of the document. Then if we look from the top corner of our document content, we can see that we have about 100 pixels from the top and 100 pixels from the left. Now notice this is the same even if I move the size of the document around and the other two paragraphs change. If I have a smaller window here and a scroll bar, you can see that it holds its position within the content now. So this box is now permanently placed 100 pixels from both the top and the left corners of the start of the document content. Now that's kind of interesting. 
Let's take a look at one more property that we can use. In addition to absolute, the last value that we can set our position property to is fixed. Now this is actually very similar to an absolute position. But the difference here is that our content now is hanging off of the browser window, not positioned inside the content. Now let's save our change. We'll go and refresh our page here, and we'll take a look. At first it looks exactly the same as our original setting using absolute value. But let me move the page around. If I just scroll the document, you can see that now that div is fixed in place referencing the browser window, not the content. So that little piece of content is going to hang in exactly that spot no matter how big the window is or where I have the content scrolled to. Now for all of these values, you can use some other measurements. For instance, I can use a right measurement instead of a left measurement, and then it'll be measured off the right side of the screen instead of off the left side of the screen. Let's switch that out. And I'm also going to change the value to zero so it's sitting right along the edge of the browser window. Let's save that change. And we'll go back and refresh our document. Now you can see that the right zero measurement has it right along that edge. We're still 100 pixels down from the top. And you'll notice as I move the window around, it stays in that exact position referencing the window, not the content.